Hi everyone, it's Dr. A, and in this video, we're going to identify the anatomical landmarks of the human body. And while we're doing this, you may hear some terminology that you're already familiar with. So the idea here is to either refresh your memory or to help you associate terminology that you do know with terminology that you'll need to know as you continue your exploration of anatomy and physiology. So before we get started, I'd like you to notice the key or the legend towards the bottom of your screen. This legend identifies the two general categories or divisions of the skeleton. The first is what we refer to as the axial skeleton, and the second is what we refer to as the appendicular skeleton. Now the axial skeleton represents the bones that are within the midline of the body, and you can see these shaded in a light purple color and the remaining portions of the skeleton are shaded in a yellowish color. And we refer to these areas as the appendicular skeleton. So let's start with the image that we see on our left-hand side. First, we have the cephalic region, and this term here simply represents the head. And part of the head, of course, includes our skull, which we can also refer to as the cranial area or cranium, and the other portion is the facial area. Now, moving over towards the other side, and in order, we have the frontal bone, which refers to the forehead, the orbital bone, which refers to the eye sockets, the nasal bone, of course, referring to the nose, and the zygomatic bone, which refers to the upper cheek. Next is the buccal area, which represents the lower cheek. And lastly here, we have the oral region, which represents the mouth. So let's shift back to the other side of the image. Now the area that we refer to as the supraclavicular region simply means or represents the area that is above the clavicle. So what we're saying is that the prefix supra, S-U-P-R-A, means above and clavicular is referring to the clavicle or what you may commonly refer to as the collarbone. Next is the axillary region, and the axilla refers to the armpit. Following this is the mammary region, which refers to the breast. Next we have the brachial region, and it's this region that represents the arm. The area that follows on our image here is the cubital region, and cubital means elbow, specifically the anterior aspect of the elbow, or what we may commonly refer to as the front of the elbow. Now, the next term here will make even more sense given that we understand that cubital refers to the front of the elbow. And this next term is antecubital. So the prefix ante, A-N-T-E, means before or in front of. So antecubital means before the elbow or in front of the elbow. Our next term here is umbilical which we typically refer to as the midpoint of the abdomen or the belly button. The next and another term that uses the prefix ante is antebrachial, which represents the forearm. Next is the carpal region, which refers to the wrist, and you may also hear or see the term carpus, C-A-R-P-U-S, used to identify this area too. Following this is the digital area, or the digits, which represent our fingers. And as we make our way down, we have the femoral region, which refers to the thigh. The cruel region refers to the front of the lower leg, and although it's not pictured here, if we refer to the back of the lower leg, what we typically call the calf, it's referred to as the sural, S-U-R-A-L region. As we continue here, we have the tarsal region, which refers to the ankle, and directly after this, we have the digital area again, this time representing the toes. Now, as we shift sides again, we have three areas or divisions of the body to identify. The first section or region here is the thoracic cavity. And this area or region is the upper chest. Just inferior to or below this is our abdominal area. And just inferior to it, is the pelvic region. And last but not least, on this first image, we have the inguinal area, which refers to the groin, and the pedal region, which refers to the foot. 
Now, the labeling we've just done represents the interior or front aspect of the body, except for our brief mention of the sural region, which again refers to the back of the leg or calf. So if we give our attention to the image on the right hand side of the screen, we have the posterior aspect of the body. So starting at the top on the left, we have the temporal region, which refers to the sides of the skull. And just as we identified on the anterior aspect of the body, we also have the cephalic region, which is again the head. And just below it is the cervical region, which represents the neck. Shifting over to the left side again, the term dorsal refers to the back and or the posterior aspect of the body. The next term here is olecranon, and this term represents the posterior or back of the elbow. The term that follows this is flank, and this represents the lateral or outer sides of the body. Now, as we move down, our next term is the lumbar region and the term lumbar represents the lower back. And below this, we have the gluteal region, which of course identifies the buttocks. And following this is the popliteal area, and this term represents the back of the knee. And last but not least, we can divide our extremities into an upper and lower region. Well, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful, and if you indeed found value in it, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video.